add more mediation. And it's, and it's an area we've really invested a lot of time and effort into the last year uh, because uh, we had a lot of feedback that the simplicity, the simplicity needed to be improved and the ease of, ease of using this feature needed to be improved. Um, so lots of different, uh, we understand the need to deliver lots of different ads from lots of different competing networks. And so um, these are a few examples of the type of ads that, that can actually be served through mediation. And these are all the standard kind of ad units that are generally uh, provided by different ad providers. Um, and, and something that's coming soon, which is pretty cool, is reward-based mediation. Now, um, to, to kind of not go too much into what that is, but essentially rewarded ads are when instead of asking somebody to make a purchase to uh, upgrade in, in, in a particular game or something like that, why not get them to watch a video um, and then you as the developer are earning revenue from them watching that video uh, and the user is ultimately unlocking some coins or some extra benefits in the app or something like that. Anyway, so that will be available in mediation uh, later this year. Which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so we had 25 networks um, competing in AdMob pass rate available to be input into your ad more mediation, that was last year. Uh, this, this year is 40, so obviously a big boost there, so we're doing a lot of work, which is great. And then uh, an example of uh, that's quite relevant to this uh, region as well is, uh, earlier in the year it was announced that Tencent was going to be one of the partners as well, so really, really important for APAC developers who have a large, really large APAC audience as well. Um, so again, um, more monetization options there. Uh, yeah, something else in... Um, Just a cog sitting there in the middle, floating. Whoops. Anyway, um, so ad network optimization. In the past, for those that may be uh, familiar with mediation, you'd have to understand what rates, say, uh, network A was providing, what rates network B was providing, and then manually put that in there and essentially create your own stack. It's called uh, based on manual input. Um, we've automated that now. There's an option in there to be able to automate it, and, and the system just kind of reads it all and essentially allows you to really concentrate on building cool apps. So that's something that's pretty cool as well. Currently available in AdMob. Okay, so easy ad integration. So getting closer to the end. So kind of going back a bit, um, there's often misconceptions about exactly where you can use AdMob as well. So it's, it's multi-platform, uh, iOS and Android. Android obviously, but yeah, iOS, not, people, not many people actually realize that unless they're using it. Um, we're one of the few parts of Google, I guess, that, that, that isn't necessarily uh, specific to our own platform. Um, and actually there's been equal growth over the last 12 months in terms of app developers using iOS and Android. 650,000 apps monetized with AdMob and each month we're delivering about 200 billion ad requests. So that's 200 billion of those impressions. That's it. Um, if you're worried about also the look and feel of ads and how they may look in your app and in terms of what that means from a user experience perspective, um, we've kind of got it covered, I hope. Um, native ads, Native, ad, native means it's, it's more integrated into the look and feel of the app itself. Um, so you can kind of see that on the left hand device, the ad, that's an ad down the bottom. And so you can see how it's a bit more friendly. Um, other types of interstitials that we deliver on Lightbox and TrueView, so they're two, two video type ads, it's all just done automatically in the system. Um, and, and I talked before about the importance of interstitials as well. And, and so CPMs is, is one of the ways that you can understand the value of a particular ad network. Our interstitial CPMs are kind of growing, which is wonderful. So at, at IO, in terms of actual integration, tap that one small. Ooh, small. Yeah. Um, at IO, one thing that was pretty cool that we announced to further uh, allow for ease of implementation was that AdMob was actually being integrated into the Android Developer Studio, which was pretty cool, and that was included in the recent release of 1.2 a couple of months ago. Um, and so it's essentially following the bouncing ball as you kind of go through, set up an AdMob account, and then start to actually click a few checkboxes in, in the developer studio itself, and then uh, a couple of technical elements, and then you're ready to go pretty much. So very straightforward and, and very easy, which is, which is wonderful. Um, and also for those game developers, of, of which I think we had one over here, and then a mistake over there. Um, so if that one person, whoever they were, uh, Unity and Cocos 2D, which are gaming engines, which yeah. a lot of game developers use, uh, we're, we're, we're very close with them, and we've got a, a high level of integration with our product, and, and their products too. That's it from me. All right.
I'm gonna wrap up. Um, I see a lot of blank faces. Can I do a pop quiz a little bit? Um, how about the guy over there with... Hi. <laughs> Can you tell me about um, what one feature that guy present just now? I feel like a lecturer more than presenter. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the guy on the right shirt can give a hint. Yeah, what, 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 can you mention one of the features? The name? Yeah, no, it's okay as well. <laughs> features. <coughs> yes, perfect. So interstitial is actually one of the format. It is when the ads is showing at the whole screen. So, I just want to uh, recap what Guy has mentioned. First, um, AdWop enables you to make decisions based on data. What kind of data? You you able to identify which of your users actually uh, spend on in-app purchase. And in case um, we are not being clear, in-app purchase is something like, for example, who plays for Ninja? Alright, so I'm very bad at Fruit Ninja, so I always die. Um, and sometimes there's an option to buy extra help, right? In which you exchange the items in the game with some caches. That is one of example of in-app purchase. So we able to identify which of the users that spend and which are the users that will never spend. They'll just wait for another hour to restart. And from there, we can make a very targeted ads. Maybe for users who spend, we'll show like ads about, hey, 50% discount for, for this item. Whereas for users that will never spend on in-app purchase, we don't spam them with this kind of ads. Instead, if let's say you know that this user is a female, we'll show them ads about shoes or clothes. Whereas if, it's, uh, if the user is a guy or a developer, maybe you show them ads about SDK that can save their lives, something along that line. And yeah, so basically it gives you the power to take control and really make the best experience out of your users while you yourself can monetize. And lastly, monetize early. Don't wait until tomorrow. Every single second that you spend waiting, every single second that you tell your tech person, let's say, hey, I have an action item for you to learn about AdMob, and you know that he actually have like 1,000 things to do in your startup, and then you got to wait for another month, there is actually revenue loss. And this revenue can actually invest it to further expand your apps. So what are you waiting for? Request for consultation. So guys actually will be joining Singapore very soon. Hmm. We, will, we have abducted him, and he will be in Singapore officially in August, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So he's actually the Google expert. So I know you, I mean, I've been in Singapore for 10 years. Do you, I know the word kiasu. So be kiasu. Uh, now take note of this link. And then I think the first five or 10, is it five or 10? <laughs> ah, okay, never mind. Anyway, I'll talk to Guy. For the first five or 10 requests, we'll do a personalized consultation. So yeah, be quick. See ya. Woo. Yeah, sorry, to, to add to that as well, I mean, that, that's just a link where you can, for those that are interested, you can actually talk with us and, and people in our team as well. It's got a couple of little things in there uh, just to help us understand a bit more about your business. Um, but the, what we find is it's a great way to actually be able to communicate as much as possible with all those people in, in an audience uh, who are interested in kind of understanding more and, and allowing us to help you with the problems that you may be having um, from our perspective. But thank you very much. I look forward to being up here in, in mid-August and, and then working closer with the GDG. And thanks, guys, as well, for, for allowing us to come and chat. Cheers. Woo. Are there any questions for Guy and Jeannie? Where did 
that extra money come from? Or was it the largest sample in the second test? There's missing data. So in terms of the, the user sample, uh, it, it wasn't targeted. So it wasn't targeted to the same amount of users per se. It was it was just an impression cap. So this, uh, it, was, it was to make sure that the same number of ad impressions were being used. But the, just the difference between the 100 and 107 in the top one and the 140 or whatever it was, the, the same kind of test. So the, the difference there would have been just because um, more, more users uh, made a purchase through that particular ad. And uh, plus, it was targeted more appropriately in the second place. And so rather than everybody kind of seeing that, uh, that ad, which was the first example, um, only a select few saw the ad in the second example. Right, so if fewer people see, see the ad, yep. you earn more money? Yeah, so, so that's an example of the, of the targeting capability and, and how accurate that was. Yeah, but my assumption is that the second test would have a larger, then the, 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 the total number of users would have been larger. Otherwise, in the best case scenario, it would earn the same. It's something to do with the targeting. For example, I show you an ad about high heels. You won't be pleased and you won't click on it, and hence the app owner won't earn anything. That cost the ECPM, which is the cost per mile, uh, will drop. But imagine that, so that is the case of the first uh, test in which that there's no targeting at all. Whereas, for example, on the second test, they, tar they segment the users more diversely. Um, so they know, for example, uh, we are showing impressions specifically for, I don't know, like soccer lover, and then the ad showing is about soccer. In that way, the click-through rate will be higher, and it translates to a higher CPM. So that's why there is a, although the impression that is served to, like, is smaller, but because it's more targeted based on data, the value of each impression is higher. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, in, in a way, yes. Uh, okay. I think you have a slightly different question. Uh, never sure. mind. I don't want to waste more time here. Uh, with this. I, yes. We yeah, we can take it offline. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? So my team is actually building a content-driven app where we are planning to sell, uh, directly sell native advertising to potential clients and partners. So my intuitive understanding of, of uh, native ads versus like a platform like AdMob is that the platform will actually detract value from those native ads. So uh, I was just wondering, do you have any uh, examples or do you have any experience from which uh, AdMob can actually complement this? So right now, Right now, the whole ad mob network is, those ads are provided there I think, basically two ways, and actually, me and kind of be talking about this side of things in a, in, in a moment. Um, it's the Google sales team primarily going out and selling to those advertisers. So if I've interpreted that question correctly, you want to be able to make your own sales deals, and perhaps use the ad mob platform to be able to deliver those on, into your app? Uh, it's more of uh, creating my own news. Yep. It's more of creating my own news. Yep. And Perhaps supplement that with that more. Okay, yep. Right, right now, it, the platform doesn't, uh, as standard, allow for that. Mainly just because it's, it's kind of evolving. But down the track, we're going to have something called reservations, which will allow for you to make your own direct deals. And so let's say you, you want to sell an ad, and sorry about the, the lingo, you want to sell an ad with a CPM of $20. Whereas AdMob is probably going to be able to deliver to the five. Um, you want to prioritise your $20 deal. Um, but you're only able to perhaps show that to us a third of the time. Um, and so for the remaining two thirds, you, can, you want to be able to show ad mob, therefore you can maximise the yield. Um, right now, not available. Uh, in the future, it will be through this reservations feature. Okay, cool. Uh, I guess I have to get in touch with you there. Yep, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? There's one up, up the side there. Oh, there's, there's a mic up just there. Thanks. I have a question with regards to um, the slide with the cut the rope character. Um, it seems that um, the banner ad that was displayed in the first phone is very much customized 
um, to fit how the cut the rope character you know appear with the ad. Um, is is there any like limitations where you know um, we don't just put a section in our app where you put the banner ad, but you can actually you know, know the size of the ad and then you know, put some more stuff so that it would properly um, display more smoothly with the rest of the app. Yep, so perhaps two different things. Firstly, uh, with a banner ad, the, the size and the dimensions is standard uh, based on AdMob. You can't choose the, the dimensions to that. You can customize some of the colors, particularly for what we call a text ad. Um, you, you would have seen the green, like the kind of fluoro green banner. So you can customize some of those colors. So there's, li there's some customization available for that. But on the other hand, there is the native ads feature, um, which we kind of talked about as well. Um, that's still in beta at the moment. It's kind of launching and improving and evolving slowly um, with some of our big partners who are testing it. So the end result is that that's going to be 100% customizable to you based on some of our teams also making sure that, it, it, that, that they approve it, essentially. Um, so from a native ad perspective, yes, you'll be able to customize it uh, as long as it's kind of within our policy restraints. So that means that you're able to have more um, more control over the size, the dimensions, the, the kind of location, um, uh, the, the text, the colour, you know, all sorts of things. So that for all intents and purposes, it still is an ad, but it, it's very neatly integrated into the into the user experience and the graphics within your within your own app. So look for, for that, keep an eye out, um, because over the next few months it's going to be continuing. And I was literally talking with the product team this morning, and they're making really, really strong progress on, on releasing that as well. No worries. Any others? Wonderful. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>